Mia was only 15 years old when she was trafficked into a prostitution den that catered mostly to Chinese nationals in the Philippines. Ano po siya, um, yun po makikipagtalik po kami sa customers, kahit anong gawin na lang po, basta daw po talik, ganun. In 2020, opposition Senator Risa Ontiveros uncovered such trafficking schemes that offer sexual services to workers of so-called Philippine offshore gaming operators or POGOs. POGOs cater to a huge Chinese market. With gambling mostly banned in mainland China, its people turn to online gambling through these Philippine-based companies. POGOs have been linked to other crimes, including kidnappings of migrant workers. Foreign workers became valued commodities as labor became scarce due to pandemic-linked travel restrictions. Police data show 40 Pogo-related kidnapping incidents were recorded in 2022. A police source gave me details of a case involving the recent escape of an abducted Chinese Pogo worker, including the name and location of a witness to track down. The source said abductors demanded at gunpoint 300,000 Philippine pesos or some 5,500 U.S. dollars. I went to the Bayside area where the suspected abductors were arrested, and after several days, I was able to track down witnesses. They said it was on this bridge that a Chinese pogo worker jumped out of a vehicle and into the embrace of a main witness. <laughs> In tracking down and speaking with multiple witnesses of an abducted Pogo worker's escape in this very bridge, you get a tiny glimpse of just how hard it is to investigate and more so prosecute Pogo-related crimes, specifically the kidnappings of Pogo workers. The prevailing perception among witnesses I spoke to is that the syndicate or syndicates behind these abductions are people with the resources to put their lives at risk. And so they're forced to stay silent. Proponents of the industry say one should distinguish between legal and illegal pogos. But Philippine Senator Grace Poe says it can be hard to make that distinction. The main business model of a pogo is inherently flawed already. There's very little transparency, even accountability. Of Metro Manila's 16 cities, at least one has banned POGOs. Pasig City's ordinance bans all forms of online gaming to operate in the city after the year 2023, citing the spate of POGO kidnappings. Beyond the kidnappings, syndicates have started taking advantage of the perceived lucrativeness of POGOs, using fake POGO jobs as a lure. Jane is a trafficking survivor who asked us not to reveal her real name. She was employed to work as a pogo call center operator in Thailand, but ended up a victim who was forced to work in a cryptocurrency scam ring based in Myanmar. Narinig ko yung word na pogo. Nag-search naman ako. Meron akong nakita doon 50,000 a month. Sabi ko, ha? 50,000 a month? Tapos nakikita ko may mga ads or may mga video na naghihikayat din yung mga katulad nating Filipino. A representative from the Bureau of Immigration, Dana Sandoval says many of the Filipinos duped into these job scams are highly educated and have previous international travel records. This makes it harder for immigration officials to identify them as trafficking victims. There are companies that are um, recruiting Filipinos online and um, are uh, ferrying them out of the country by going to different Asian countries and then just jumping from there to, to work in countries like um, Myanmar. Ms. Andoval says they are subjected to physical abuse, especially if they fail to meet their quota to scam other victims. This was verified by trafficking survivor Jane. Hirap na araw-araw kami papasok na hindi namin gusto yung ginagawa namin. Kaso wala kami choice kasi kailangan namin mabuhay. She now spends her days debunking online fake pogo job ads. Juan Bernal, CNA, Manila.